The 2024-25 Premier League campaign is on the horizon. In preparation, we're previewing every single team and discussing how they'll shape up over the next campaign. We take a look at the transfer business conducted by the team so far and offer suggestions of who else they should move for before the season gets started. In this video, we discuss Southampton. Following their promotion via the playoffs, we talk about how Southampton can improve their squad and whether Russell Martin can cut it in the Premier League. We also look at their business so far and analyse why it's actually been very decent. This is our 2024-25 season preview for Southampton. Alright, let's talk about Southampton. Then we'd like to start this season's this season preview by going back through last season, talking about what was successful, what wasn't. For Southampton, a very successful season. Obviously, it's in the Championship, and we'll talk about today how they can adapt that style to the Premier League and whether Russell Martin's got what it takes. But very successful season in the Championship, right? Yeah, very very much so. It was a four-way fight for the majority of the season. Yes, Southampton did fall away from the top three and the top two uh, towards the end and that meant they had to go through the playoffs to be completely honest I think they surprised everyone by winning that player final it looked bound that Leeds would go up as the third side Southampton beat them on the day that's what the playoffs are about get it right on the day get that promotion that's what they did they had a decent season they kept in there in fourth and they won the game that mattered the most and they're in back in the Premier League I think they've gone a little bit under the radar coming up because obviously everyone's rate, or everyone's talking about Leicester and their points deductions and all their problems, new manager, whatever. Everyone's talking about Ipswich, it's back-to-back -back promotions. For Southampton, I feel like their promotion is being talked about a lot less than the other two. And that can be a blessing, that can also be a problem. Yeah, it's strange. Obviously, last season was Southampton's first season of the Championship in about 15 years. Mm. And yet, it didn't feel too abnormal, but it should feel abnormal. They are yeah. an established, or up until that point, they were an established Premier League side. I think since about 2020, Southampton have lost their way. And now it's about how can they find yeah. that? How can they re find that spark that first brought them up to the Premier League? They would, they did those back-to-back -back mm. promotions the same way Ipswich did. Um, and obviously now it's just be looking to build a platform like Southampton have for the last decade. But I, I feel that since 2020, it's not been the same Southampton. The recruitment's been strange. This summer, it seems to me that they're back to that 20, 2011. They're bringing in yeah. some really smart signings. They're trusting in some young players. This is uh, some smart business I yeah. think, for Southampton. I mean, yeah, they've had a very busy window, but overall, yeah, it looks like a decent window on paper. And if that translates onto the pitch, they could be in for a strong season. Yeah, so let's start by looking at that window. Then we'll look at the incomings and outgoings. We'll start with the outgoings. Probably the most notable is striker Che Adams leaving for Torino on a free. This is a big loss. It is a big loss. He's a, he's a decent player on a free as well. He's never a nice way to lose someone. I... I I think it is a big loss. He did well last season. But equally, if we think back to the Premier League campaign two years ago, I don't think Adams was particularly brilliant. I think he was OK and, and, and he played some decent football. But in the top flight, I didn't think he looked uh, incredible. Southampton fans might disagree with me. But overall, going into the Premier if they're in the Championship, huge loss because he, you know, he, does, he did brilliantly down there. But I do. I I I don't think in terms of the promotion, it's as big of a loss as it as it feel would feel like. No, I agree. I think that they've got adequate, you know, cover in that area. Mm. I think they'll look to probably add another attacker, but they have had another attacker yeah. already. So, I don't think it's a huge loss. I think they'd have liked to get some money for him, but I don't. I don't think it's a big loss for Southampton. Yeah. I think a lot of people will be going. Well, they've come up and they've lost their striker. That's immediately a bad sign. I'm not sure it's that big a loss. I think they'll be fine mm. without Adams. Mm. Other areas then, some rotation squad depth type players have left. Roman Perot going to Real Betis for three million. It's a nice chance for him to build a career yeah, for himself yeah. at Betis. Uh, I'm sure it'll be a very adequate backup. Lianco then going to Atletico MG, four million pounds. It's a nice four million for a player mm. who was okay in the Premier League, but he wasn't great. And I think they've probably got better in the squad and yeah. they've signed better. And then uh, DJ Classico, another centre half. He's leaving to join this Leon Revolution, where they're just signing loads of random ex Premier League players. Yeah. And yeah, three million pounds there, pocketing a, a nice bit of money there. For yeah, South yeah. So I think they made a loss though on a couple of those players. So that's slightly concerning. Mm. But I think they'll take what money they can get at this point. Yeah, exactly. though They weren't huge in that promotion push. Mm. Uh, those three. Let's look at incomings then, or at least they won't be great in the Premier League. Yeah. Moving on to incomings, they've. Done a lot in this window already, so that's quite good to see. When you come up from the championship, you do want to get a 
a lot of business mm. done. You want to improve that squad. I think they've done a really nice job of doing that. First up, Taylor Harwood Bellis joining from Manchester City for 19 million. This is a really good sign. Yeah, definitely looked looked very very comfortable there on loan last season, and you know making it a permanent make it, it, it sensible. He's the type of player where he can handle the step up. He knows the manager. He knows the system. He knows the squad. It's it's a very smart. It's, it, it's a no brainer really for Southampton. Yeah, and he's a player at a young age that's got a lot of senior minutes under his belt. Mm. He's had loan spells, obviously, as you mentioned, at Southampton last season. He was on loan at Burnley the season before that. So he knows what it takes to, to play at that level. And I think a lot of those skills will be translatable for him in the Premier yeah. League. And, and yeah, I think it's a really nice addition for Southampton. 20 million, it's not too, or 19 million, it's not too bad to pay for him. No. I think they will be very pleased with that deal. Yeah. Up next, Adam Lallana joining <laughs> on a free. I love this transfer for the, the story arc of it. Obviously, the ex. Southampton lad coming back to play for his boyhood club. It's a, it's a nice story. I'm not sure he's going to be incredible, but I think he'll put a shift in. I think he'll definitely put a shift in, and you know, I think he, he, he looked decent in that in the Brighton side last season. And I think you know he, he's very capable of still playing in the Premier League, especially in the bottom half of the Premier League. And I think this one goes hand in hand with the Charlie Taylor signing as well on a free. You've got two free transfers of experienced Premier League players that know you know what how to play in this league, but and also know how to deal with the you know the pressure of a relegation fight. Two very good signings there. That's something we haven't seen Ipswich and Leicester do is sign proven, experienced players. That's what Southampton have done here. That, you know, they're, they're two very good signings. Yeah, they're, they're really crucial depth signings. They're players who won't play a whole lot. They're certainly not going to start. I would be surprised if they got a thousand minutes between them. But I think they'll both put in, you know, the odd twenty minutes yeah, here exactly. and there. If there's an injury crisis, they're, they're decent players to come in and do a shift. I think Lallana's role will probably be more important than Charlie Taylor's. Yeah. Taylor's going to be third choice in that pecking order on that left hand side. Well, potentially second choice there, and then I think Lallana will be, um, be yeah, second choice mm. in midfield unless they sign another player there. So, yeah, I think they're both going to come in and, and be more fringe players or squad players. I don't think they're going to be starting, but there'll be players who can come in when they're called upon and, and definitely do a real shift for Southampton. And I think they've done. They've got this recruitment overall. It's a really nice mix of some really talented young players, yep. some solid up-and-coming players from abroad, mm-hmm. and then some really experienced players as well. Let's touch on some of those young players. Then Nathan Wood from Swansea for £3 million. A decent centre-half option, I think. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's a bit of a... Um bit of a free hit of you know a young ex- you know a younger player with a lot of talent you know for for quite a small fee if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out if he develops yeah. superbly it's a brilliant piece of business yeah i think he'll probably be third second choice this season for southampton so he may not play a whole load of minutes but this does future proof them as well if they do go down to the yeah. championship next season then you would expect hard bellis to probably be leaving again mm. but with wood stepping up they'll probably be all right the other signing at centre half, Ronnie Edwards, then from Peterborough. This is a huge signing. He's yeah. been touted with twenty million plus moves a few years ago, and I still think there's a load of potential in Ronnie Edwards. He's a mm. right footed centre half who tends to play at the left centre half position, so that provides really nice cover to Jan Bednarek. And I think they'll be. Fe- I, th- I think he's a very good player. Yeah, very much. Also, as you say, in the last couple of years. Uh, Edwards has been rumoured with moves here and there for big fees and yeah. you know being the next best thing and to get him for three million is still a really good bit of business and once again if he develops on his potential great fee it doesn't work out it doesn't work out it's not that big of a loss we're still only 20 I think exactly so, yeah. yeah seems like a great deal I wouldn't be surprised if he can show what he did in the championship I wouldn't be surprised if he then pushes for a, a starting mm. role in this Southampton side it's going to be difficult in the Premier League but He's very good on the ball, and that's what you yeah. need to be in the Premier League, and that's what you need to be for Russell Martin. So I think that's a really nice signing. Uh, you've got Yukonari Sugara, Suga Waru, who's joining in from AZ Alkmaar in the ODVC, £8 million, pounds, or £6 million, pounds, sorry. He plays right back. He's going to be a really solid cover, I think, for, yeah. for Carl Walker Peters. I don't expect him to start every game, but no. he's going to get minutes here and there. He's going to be a really nice recover player. And at just 24, there's a good chance he's at Southampton for a good few mm. years if he's yeah. successful. Definitely. And I think definitely. he will be. He's been very good at Alkmaar. He's quite good going forwards, mm. solid enough defensively. I think it'll be a really good signing. One yeah. of those that could just become a solid, reliable Premier League player exactly. for the next it, it, it makes know, sense. half a decade. It, it makes sense. You know, you, you, it, and again, similar. this is what I love. It's, it feels like it's a, there's quite a lot of risk-free business here from Southampton. If, if yeah. some of these don't work out, you know, fair enough. It's a small fee for a player that could you know develop well and, and could be a very handy Premier League player, as you say. 
it, you know, it, it, they're, they're deals that make a lot of sense. Yeah, and for most of them, I think you would get a return on your investment unless yes, they're terrible, but then that should be cancelled out by other mm. players in the squad being good enough. Like you think Ronnie Edwards, if they're going to sell him on, would be above mm. 10, 20 million. Yeah. So I, I think that they, they, they've covered if yeah, they do go down definitely. because those players will be able to cut it at that level and if not they'll be sold for huge prices yeah. so th- th- I think I really like this business so far Flynn Downs then from West Ham for 18 million obviously he was at the side last season he plays that deeper role for the, in that Southampton midfield it makes a lot of sense to sign him I think 18 million is a little bit steep but for a player who was so solid for Southampton last season I don't think you can really complain. Again, yeah, really, you know, it's a really solid player that knows your team very well, that has minutes in the Premier League. Yeah, and it it make it, it, honestly this business from Southampton is really solid. Again, it's another representation of a player that is still decently young, but as I said, you know, he's played in the Premier League before. He's got a de- substantial amount of minutes, and he and, and that is very useful for a team that getting promoted. Uh, and and he, as you say, he's a very decent player that plays a big role in this Southampton side. Yes, definitely. So, and then finally, Ben Brereton Diaz. I was very surprised when Ben Brereton Diaz didn't join a Premier League side last summer. He went to Villarreal. He was there for six months. It didn't really work out. Then he got signed on loan to Sheffield United. And he showed glimpses of quality, I think, mm. in a very poor Sheffield United side. And actually, coming in at the start of the season with Southampton, where he's going to understand the tactic that yeah. you know perhaps wasn't there for Sheffield United when he just had to be thrown in to what was ultimately an impossible situation. Yeah. But I think here, £7 million, really decent price to pay for. And Villarreal will be happy because they signed him a year ago for free, I think it was. Yeah. And so they get a huge return on their investment. But yeah, I think he's a good signing. I think he'll come in and do well. We, he, we expect him to play on the left wing, but he could also obviously play through the middle. Yeah. If they do t- play on the attacking midfielder, he could play as that attacking mm. midfielder this season. So he's a very versatile player. Yeah. And he's someone who will get you goals. If you get yeah. him in the right positions, he will score goals. So I think it's a really solid signing for Southampton. I like their business so far. They've spent probably what a total of 50 million there. Mm. And they've signed really solid backups, some re- really nice starters and and. That squad building is really strong yeah, from definitely. Southampton. So let's have a look then at how that looks as a squad on the squad planner. So 4 3 3 is how we expect them to line up. That's how they played last season. Mm. It would be strange if they changed up their tactic massively. But what we did see from Southampton was using a, a 5 3 2 in some of the big matches, some of the more difficult games. And I wouldn't be surprised if that is something Russell Martin considers yeah. going into yeah. the season because. Uh, the squad's quite well set up for it because you know out in wide areas you've got Brereton Diaz he can play through the mm. middle you've got a dozy he can play like an attacking midfield type role and you've, you've got um, Sulemana so he could play for the middle so you've got they could play central role yeah. so I wouldn't be surprised if we see them go to a 5-3-2 at some point this season because they are going to be up against it in a lot of games and we yeah. saw how Luton playing a similar sort of system were able to get a lot out of it because they could be very very defensive yeah. but I think Southampton will try and play football at least at the start of the season, so we'll put it in a 4-3-3. In goal, Gambazuna will likely return to his starting berth. He missed right at the end of last season mm-hmm. with injuries, and McCarthy came in and was huge in the playoff final. Yeah. I don't think he's going to um, continue playing, though. So you've got Bazuna, you've got McCarthy, and you've got Lumley. Lumley, decent third choice. Yeah. You know, fulfills the English quota <laughs> if they get to Europe, so they'll be fine there. Back four then, left back Manning, Larios and Taylor. I'm not sure what's happening with Juan Larios. I think he missed a lot of last season with injury. Obviously, uh, Ryan Manning joined from Swansea with Russell Martin and yeah. I think he will continue to put faith in Manning. So, that, But they have got three options that there now and I think Manning will probably start but there is an opportunity there for yeah. Larios to, yeah. to get in ahead of him, I think. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, Walker Peters can cover that side as well. We saw him do that. He was a left back actually when... Um, when Livermento was there playing right back. So he can do that as well. So in a half options then Bednarek and Edwards. I think that's really solid. solid for the left hand side. Then the right hand side of Harwood Bellis, Bella Kotchap and Wood. They've got some yeah. really nice options at centre half there and while Bednarek probably isn't the best in the world, I think you could play Harwood Bellis and Bella Kopchap back too and, and you'd be mm. alright. You could bring Ronnie Edwards in, ease him into Premier League minutes, I think he will be a very solid player. So they've got options there. Mm. Uh, right back, Walker Peters, Sugawara Wara, and uh, and James Bree, who I'd forgotten oh, was at the wow, club, but yeah. obviously he joined from Luton Town, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. So, yeah, uh, when they were... But he wasn't really playing during their Premier League no. season. Or wasn't going to play in the Premier League season. So, yeah, he, he moved. But, yeah, I think that's fairly solid right back cover. You've got Bree as a third choice. Walker Peters is going to start there and will likely play every game if he's fit. But, mm. yeah, I think that's some really nice options at right back. I mean, yeah, it's a really nice back four overall. I think they're... 
I mean, that they've got cover in every position, which is your first point of call. And it's also, it's decent cover as well. It's a good quality back line, which is exactly what you need. If you're looking to survive in the Premier League, you need defenders that can re- you, yeah. that you can rely on. You need defenders that will bail you out and will, you know, will save certain goals at times because you're going to be under so much pressure. It is a really nice complement of, 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 of defenders, especially at centre-half. I have some doubts about the ability or adaptability of Ryan Manning because mm. I, th- I think he's, I don't know, he's an okay player, but he's not proven at this level and I don't think many Premier League sides would be starting him if they don't have Russell Martin as their manager. Yeah. Because of that relationship, I think Manning will start, but I think that I, I am worried about him in the Premier League. Interesting to say, yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if at some point this season we see Walker Peters left back to Superwara Maybe, yeah. as that right back. So it's interesting, a Superwara. Uh, so then that midfield three, in defensive midfield, Flynn Downs will start. And they've only got Shea Charles as a backup. Charles is a fantastically talented mm. player, though. He joined from Man City a year ago and he played a fair amount of championship minutes. So yeah. I think that's all right. I think they may look to go in the market and see if there's any defensive midfielders around. Um, and I think there is a good option that we're going to talk about in a moment. Then in those those two midfield spots, the central midfield area, you've got Arebo, you've got Smallbone, both players who were very solid last season. Mm-hmm. You've also then got the returning, Carlos Alcaraz, who was on loan at Juventus last season. He played a decent amount of minutes at Juve, not loads, but he's coming back now to Southampton, and I think they should be looking to start him. Yeah, he's a brilliant yeah, player. Definitely. So Harsh and Arebo and Smallbone, who were key in that promotion push, mm. but a player like Alcaraz, you don't bench. No, so no, no. I think unless you're selling him for loads of money to then build the yeah. squad out more, I think starting him is an absolute must. You've got Lallana as well with cover on that position and Tyler Dibbling, who's someone I want to talk about mm. because I really rate him. I remember watching him yes. at, I want to say the U19 World Cup. It was yeah, some England youth tournament. It might have yeah. been the U17 World Cup. Um, but yeah, I remember watching him in that and he really impressed me. Mm. Um so yeah, I think I think he will be a big player. I think I hope to see him get some Premier League minutes yeah. this season. Yeah. And and yes, yeah, see where that ceiling is. But I think there's a lot of potential there. From what I saw in that tournament, he was phenomenal. He didn't sense. play loads, but when he was on, I thought he was mm. he was really good. So yeah, huge ceiling there. I'm sure Southampton fans will have watched a lot more of him. We had a comment. Yeah. So um, feel free to get your comments below. From what I've seen, he looks like a hell of a player. And uh, then out wide, you've got on the right wing a Dozy and um, Amo. I'm going to butcher this name. Amo 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 you. I hope that's correct. Something like that. Yeah, he's a, a very talented right winger. There's a lot of potential there, I think. Mm-hmm. Adozi will start, and Adozi's very talented. I think they yeah. may look to bring another right winger, just because that's not a whole lot of strength there. If Adozi is injured, suddenly you don't have a senior right winger yeah. at the club. Yeah. So I think they may look to bring in someone who could at least play that side, because Brereton and Suleiman could do a job there, but they're both left wingers and very strong left wingers. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a really, really nice. nice left wing um, cover there. Yeah. And then leading the line, you've got Adam Armstrong, you've got Seku Mari, you've got um, on- Onoachu, who went out on loan last season during their championship campaign, mm. and Stewart, who was injured all of last season. He, uh, Ross Stewart, I think his first name is, joined from Sunderland, Scottish striker. I don't think he's going to play loads of minutes in the Premier League, but maybe he'll come yeah. in and do a shift. I mean, that was an interesting transfer. A shame he got injured, but it's yeah. a really nice team. They're covered in most areas. There's a couple of areas they'll probably look to find you know, more, be- more depth and higher quality depth, but overall, it's a really well-balanced team, really. Yeah, they've, they've got players in every position. I th- again, I think that right wing for me in defence midfield, because those backups are young players, yeah. and they may look to bring in some, some reinforcements. So let's talk transfers then, because the first person I'm going to suggest is Oliver Skip. Oliver Skip, mm. Oliver Skip, he's been at Tottenham now for a few years. He's played, I think, 70 games in four years. Cool. So he's yeah been in and out mm. of the side. I don't think many a load of those were starts, but he's been fairly loyal to Tottenham. Mm. I think he'd come in as a really nice option. I don't think his FP ref profile is very compelling, but a lot yeah. of that is because of those sporadic minutes for mm. Tottenham. But still, that pass completion up in the 90... Uh, 98th percentile wow. of defensive midfielders. That's really strong and it shows how he's able to hold on to the ball. And with Russell Martin favouring this possession-dominant style of mm. football and actually with a, a relegated side who don't want to give the ball away all the time, yeah. having someone who's really yeah. secure in possession could be really nice. So I think it'd be a really nice option. He would probably be back up to Flynn Downs in that role. So then you question, you know, why would you spend money on him if he's only going to be a backup? But I don't think it'd be hugely pricey. I think a loan move would be possible as well. I'm, sat, yeah. I'm surprised we've not seen any loan moves yet for Southampton. Coming off a smart side, loan moves are a smart way to bring yeah. in players without having to fork out loads. And if you do go down, you don't then have that player on yeah. your books that you've then got to shift. So I, th- I think Oliver Skip could be someone they look at. There is also interest from Ipswich Town from Leicester City. So 
they, they do have to stave off that, but mm. I think they could pr- propose a very nice project to Skip. So I think that'd be a nice deal. Yeah, Skip's one of those. You know, he's never really given. A, you know, he's never really been given a chance at Tottenham. As you say, he's played very few minutes. He's had some really good games. He's had some terrible games. But overall, he is a decent player. And I think if he was playing consistent football in a side like Southampton, we could really see how good he is because he is a decent. He's a, you know he's a decent player. And, yeah. and you give him the opportunity, you give him 38 Premier League games, and I think he could really, you know, shine and show everyone how good he is, you know, better than just, you know, warming the bench most of the time for Tottenham. Yeah, very true. And then, an am much more ambitious signing, but someone I think who would be almost transformative for Southampton, is Omar Marmouche. Oof. He obviously plays for Eintracht Frankfurt, who are a very mm. good side out in Germany. He plays as a striker slash right wing, and he's Egyptian. I think Marmouche comes in and would be a really solid option. You look at his FA ref profile, mm. he's very well-rounded. A lot of t- quality in there. 93rd percentile for progressive carries, which does show he's a bit more of a winger, but it also shows that when he plays as a striker, mm. he does drop in and come and get involved with the play, which, again, I think is a quality that Mar- Martin would really like. Yeah. A, a striker who can come and get involved with the play, bring players like Brereton Diaz and Adozi into the game more, bring Alcaraz into the game more. I think they're really nice options, mm. and I think with Marmouche, because you can play right wing, because you can play striker, you you get a bit of versatility there, and you get a player who is genuinely really quality, twenty five years old, so he's still got his best years ahead of him potentially, and yeah, I, th- I think it'd be a fantastic signing. It's going to be fairly pricey. Mm. I think you'd be looking at twenty twenty five million for him, but maybe Southampton can negotiate slightly cheaper. I think he'd be worth that price tag. The fact Southampton haven't invested loads in their attacking area for me is an odd choice, just because. Obviously, Adam Armstrong was phenomenal last season, but when he was yeah. in the Premier League the year before last, those numbers, those contributions just weren't yeah. there for him. And then after that, you know, Seku Mara not proving this level, Paul Onoachu not proving this level, Ross Stewart not proving this level. So I think bringing someone in who is proven, not at Premier League level, of course, but at another yeah. elite league level, for me, that's a, that's a really nice sign. Yeah, very much so. I think he's a brilliant, brilliant player. It would be very ambitious and it would be a very difficult deal to pull off. But it's a, it's a big statement. You know, this is a type of you know huge signing that could you know could realistically, if they were to bring him in, could take Southampton up a few places in the league. It's as simple as that. You know, he would raise the level of that of the squad that highly. But as I said, it'd be a very ambitious deal. It'd be very difficult to pull off. But I do like him. He's a very, very good player. And he would suit Southampton very nicely. I think the best way to put it is he, he's the kind of player who would make me consider putting a Southampton player in my FPL team. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, I'm not going to put any of them in. But if they did sign Omar Mamouche, I think that would be a, an option mm. to think about. So, yeah, I think he would add some real quality and, and that could be a real difference maker if Southampton yeah. are in a, what is a difficult situation next yeah. season. So, yeah, beating the drop this year is going to be very difficult. I think they've, they've got less resources than the likes, than the teams mm. around them. I think that... I have some doubts over Russell Martin's football. I think it's very nice football at times, but it's a little bit too hesitant. They love having the ball, but they don't. And a little, they're not very penetrative. They don't get shot loads of shots away. They don't get loads of goals. I think that yes, they can dominate games in the championship, but I have doubts about trying to play a possession dominant style in the Premier League, especially when you don't have the quality relative to other teams. Hundred percent. Yeah, we, we you know. I think it's it's a very mixed year for Southampton because on one hand you look at it as Leicester are going to start a potentially on a points deduction. Ipswich Town haven't been in the Premier League in a very very long time. So whereas this Southampton side, they were here two years ago. They've been in the Premier League for ages. Last year was a mishap. They're looking to come back in and bounce straight back and you know you know go back to the you know their Premier League reputation that we know they have. They'll look at other teams in the league. They'll fancy themselves against them. But as you say, my big problem is if you stepping up to the Premier League and trying to play possession football is a very, very risky game. We saw, and if Martin doesn't adapt slight, even I'm not saying he should completely change the way he plays football, but if he doesn't adapt something, they're going to get hammered every week. Burnley and company, they came in, they tried to play their football and they got blown out of the water every, in every single game. Martin has to change something because they come into the Premier League and try and play possession football against Premier League sides, they will just get battered. Yeah, and I think he's he's a little bit naive in his ways. And people might say, well, you know, McKenna's been a manager for just as long. The key difference for me with Kieran McKenna is that he was a coach before that. Yes. He has a coaching yes. background. 
Obviously, yeah, Russell Martin, fantastic footballer, was brilliant for Norwich yeah, City, and great, so that nice. does give you a different experience. But I think McKenna's coaching background, the fact he was mm-hmm. a coach under you know some great managers at Manchester United, like Jose Mourinho, it's going to give you more options. It's going to yeah. give you more different tools in that toolbox. Options to if you've got a tough opponent, like they play Liverpool in the opening day of the season. I can't imagine they're going to play incredibly aggressive nah. football. I do think as well that McKenna's football is better suited to the Premier League. It's much more. Um, transitional, much more counter-attacking than Martin, who Martin's very possession-based, very trying to dominate the game, which is mm. going to be very difficult. You can't play Man City by trying to dominate exactly. them. It's not going to work. And, and so I think he has to try and reimagine his tactic. He has to have other options. And when coaches are young, they don't have that. They don't because they're not. They're, they're young. They haven't developed their tactical ideas yet. And the other thing is, you know, a few years ago in the Premier League. You'd play defensive against the top six if you were like a Southampton, and then you could play your football against the rest of the fourteen teams. It'd work. Problem is now in the Premier League, you you have to play you know, as a relegation you know, battling side. You can't afford to play your football against the top ten because they're all of high well, enough quality. Say, it's almost the exact reverse. Fourteen yeah, teams that are playing exactly, really good football. Exactly, so. and it's very difficult. I like Southampton. I like Russell Martin. I think he's a decent coach, but and. and I, I wish the best Southampton for me out of the three maybe it's such a head to stay up but I, I think Southampton could give it a very very good go I just worry that inexperience could kill them off yeah and, and for me the only reason Leicester are below Southampton is because of that points yeah. deduction if they do get a minus mm. seven it's very difficult to see them getting three wins more than they yeah. need to stay up that's very tough so it's going to be interesting to see I think Southampton are a decent side I have got some doubts about quality in certain areas of the field and I have got some huge doubts over the management so we'll see maybe they'll come in and shock everyone yeah. it's not impossible think, but... they play their football and the football might be so good That's that's they play such good football they're not in the top 10 mate yeah if we see Ben Brereton Diaz and Adam Armstrong <laughs> just knocking it around stones but and I'd Diaz be, I'd be very surprised uh, I, but you never know strange things have happened yeah, maybe they do stay exactly up this that. season I don't think it's impossible they do stay up but it's going to be a difficult tough season for Southampton ahead Yeah, but I'm sure they'll give it a good go so that should be interesting but yeah Southampton fans feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments if you're anything like Ipswich and Leicester fans I'm expecting to hear that Southampton are getting European football this yes. season so look out for those comments but yeah do feel free to get involved in the comments below thank you guys very very much for watching if you have enjoyed this there's going to be more season previews on screen we've done one for every Premier League side so on screen now will be Nottingham Forest if you want to go see another potential relegation candidate so go and check that out but that's everything from us today thank you guys very very much for watching and we'll see you next time. See ya.